Hey, 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 slackers. Welcome back, welcome back. This is video lesson nine for Calc Honors. We are um, going to continue with integrals, area under the curve. Remember whenever you hear integral or antiderivative, I want you to think area under the curve. So give me, what's one thing I want you to think of when you hear integral? That's right, area under the curve. What do I want you to think of when you hear antiderivative? That's right, area under the curve, very good. Okay, so um, it's okay, it's fine, it's fine. Um, so video lesson nine, we're going to continue with area under the curve. I know some of you are really, really trying to get through this as much as possible, especially considering the circumstances. So a little check-in here, there, and everywhere. Um, it is officially Tuesday at the Sakara Crib, Tuesday at about 10.30, um, and I have to say, despite coronavirus, Sunday was the best Easter I've ever had. Um, Jimmy and I were actually just saying it. The kids had a blast. We had so much fun. It was stress-free. No, oh, we have to leave by this time, do this, do that. Um, we did what we wanted, and it was just great. It was absolutely great. Um, I definitely made way too much food, but I'm pregnant, so I'm enjoying every second of it. Um, <laughs> and um, Olivia and Ophelia both are still talking about it. They had so much fun. Um, Jimmy did an awesome job with the Easter egg hunt and it was really good. It was good times. And the best part about it was we did not have to go to Terry the Terrors. Cha-ching. Thank you, COVID-19. I'm so sorry. Am I terrible? I'm terrible. I should not be thanking a deadly virus for that. People have, uh, no, but put aside the joking. Um, it's a terrible thing to say. I know students of mine now are being tested for coronavirus, peers of yours, um, some of your friends. Uh, it's in their houses, their family, they've lost relatives, they've lost loved ones, they've lost family of friends, um, friends of family, so it, I shouldn't be joking, um, but you know me, Miss Inappropriate. Um, no, I'm not joking about the virus, though, please don't take it out of context, I'm joking about Jimmy's mom. Um, but yeah, so we Zoomed both sides of the family, which was very, very interesting, the kids got a kick out of it. My side of the family, I think we had like 12 different houses stretched all over the country from Chicago down to Florida to New York State. It was chaos, um, but very funny. And the kids thought it was hysterical. They really, really did. Olivia is still talking about it. <clears throat> and we got everybody to work. It was great. Even my 91 year old grandmother, it worked. It was awesome. Jimmy's side of the family, not so successful as you can imagine. And it was only like four people that had to do it, us including five. So stupid. Um, his dad, bless his soul, we spent two hours the night before Easter trying to help him do it. And um, he just doesn't have new enough technology, both with a phone or a computer, to do it. And it was, I feel really bad. But the man, God bless him, he knew we were doing it at a certain time. He called, we put him on speaker. Uh, Jimmy's mom, on the other hand, Jimmy's mom, oh, Jimmy's mom. We called her at four o'clock. She has an iPhone, no reason for this. She has a tablet. She has all kinds of stuff. She spends money. We know this. And we tried to walk her through downloading the Zoom app. She couldn't remember her password. Jimmy taught her how to go into settings, change her password. She started freaking out two minutes into the conversation, screaming, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And then hung the phone. So that did it. But anyway, needless to say, it was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed your totally different version of Easter. Because, like my husband and I were just saying, we actually really enjoyed ours. Um, all things considered, it, it stunk not doing it traditionally the way we're used to. But it was really kind of nice just it being at home. It took a lot of stress out of it. On our end, anyway. So anyway, I knew you guys would be asking me, what do you know, Mr. Carroll? What do you know when school opening back up? Especially you guys because you're seniors. And I keep saying this in every video. I'm going to keep saying it. I don't know anything more than you know. Um, as far as I'm concerned, school's back April 30th. Um, unfortunately, as of today, which is Tuesday, April 14th, we have the president saying one thing, of course, the governor is saying another, <laughs> and everybody's just sitting here scratching their heads, waiting and watching and waiting. <laughs> um, I don't think, I still don't think it'd be wise to open up on the 30th. Um, statistically speaking, I don't think we're ready to. I think our governor realizes that, but he's not going to say it yet. Probably not until next week sometime. Um... I've been saying all along, I've been saying it to my husband, I'm going to keep saying it, I think mid to end May, mid to end May. I know everybody else is saying, no, we're done for the year, but I'm trying to be hopeful, so for your guys' sake, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. 
Hopefully we'll be back, even if it's just for a couple of weeks. All right, my darlings. Um, my luck. We'll go back and like two days later, I'll be on maternity leave. Ha ha ha. Um, anyway, <laughs> so here we go. Let's talk about definite intervals. I was going to do something. I planned it. And then at the last minute, I changed it. So here we are. I had a couple of you texting me, messaging me about area under the curve with remand sums. Some of you are still struggling. And I said, if you were still struggling and you communicated, I would try to do it one problem every lesson to just keep you fresh. So here we go. I'm totally making this up. My do now, so to say. Approximate the area under the curve. If you have a velocity function, V of t is 3t squared minus 4t. I want you to go on the interval from 0 to 4 with n equals 8 equals subintervals. Some of you are still like, what the hell is the n equals 8? It means I'm going from 0 to 4 on the x-axis, but I'm dividing into 8 equal parts because I want to draw 8 rectangles that have the same base from 0 to 4. Which means, if I want to figure that out, I'm going to do 4 minus 0, hit equals, and then divide by that 8. And if you do that, it's one half, which means my table for my MRAM and my RAM are the same. I'm sorry, I'm going to say a T and a V of T, which is the same thing as X and Y. It's going to go from, it's going to go in halves. So zero, one half, two halves, three halves, uh, four halves, five halves, six halves, seven halves, and eight halves. And if you imagine this being your x-axis, like if you turned it this way, here's your rectangles. Check it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So for those of you who are visual, because I know I'm a visual person, you can visualize your eight equal rectangles on the base. Okay? All right, so I can cheat with the calculator. I'm going to to save time. If you go to table set, and I'm going to change this. I want to start it at zero, and I'm going to go in 0.5s. I go to my table, and I can just copy my y's down. If you can't do that, you just have to take each x and enter them into the function. So I would do 3 times 0 squared minus 4 times 0. That's why it's 0. And then 3 times 1 half squared minus 4 times a half. And you get negative 1.25. Negative 1. So you just take each x. Plug it in everywhere you see x to get your corresponding y value. Let me scroll down here. All right, and again, this first table is for my LRAM and my RRAM, my left rectangular approximation and my right rectangular approximation for my Riemann sum. Now for the LRAM, the L stands for left and the last, they both start with L's. So I'm gonna add all my Y's except for the last Y. First, I have to figure out the base of each rectangle. So like I said, imagine this. these are the rectangles. So how far apart is it from one X value to the other? So what's 0.5 minus zero? What's 50 cents minus zero? That's right, it's 50 cents, it's a half. What's a dollar minus 50 cents? 50 cents. What's $2.50 minus $2.50? Cents. You see how the bases of all these rectangles are 50 cents apart. They're 0.5. It's a half. Now I'm going to add all these mofos except for the 32. And yes, when in doubt, write it out. Found it. Yay. I'm sorry. That was on the table and I moved it when I cleaned. My husband, of course, our luck. You guys would be, I'd have so many things to tell you. So many things, so many things. My daughter, Olivia, randomly, what was it last week, Jimmy? Jimmy's lawyer. Spit in Jimmy's face. <laughs> Just out of nowhere. A hacked a lug in his, like, it was the weirdest thing. Like, oh they eyes. were, they were joking around and she just, like, spit a lug in his face. And he was so pissed. I've never seen him so pissed. I walk in like, oh my God, he's screaming at her. She starts crying. He takes his glasses off, puts it on the floor. She steps on his freaking glasses and breaks them. So, give me your glasses. glasses. So check it out. Here is my husband's taped together glasses that he's been carrying around for almost two weeks now. And of course, you know. Part. <laughs> I didn't see it. I, I, see, I see it right there. Yeah. Um, so we are, for the first time ever, trying to order glasses online and... It's interesting. Poor James. 
Yeah, these things only happen to us. He didn't believe me when I told him I have the worst luck in the world. And he always tries to tell me, no, you don't, no, you don't. And then we live it. But anyway, hence I'm pregnant and there's a coronavirus. Come on now. Who else do these things happen to? Seriously. All right, so um, let's keep going. We have plus 8.75. Plus 15, plus, oh, so he was telling me before he couldn't find the pres his prescription. And I'm like, babe, I friggin' took care of that for you. Held on to that prescription for how many years? Put that all in the calculator. You get, I think it's 24.5, yes. I'm not gonna waste time putting the calculator. You guys can check me if you want to. Um, so he couldn't find his prescription because he finally got the ones to try on at home and he can mail them back and pick the ones he wants, but he needs his prescription to actually order them. So I held on to it for years, gave it to him, and then he lost it. So he was just telling me he found it. Anyway, Elram, at all the wise, but not the last one. L for last, at all the wise, but not the last. Don't forget to pull out your GCF. The base of each rectangle, which doesn't change for the RM. It's still 0.5 apart. Now it's the opposite. If with the LRAM, I get all of them except for the last one, then with the RAM, I'm gonna add all of them, but not the first one. Are you seriously still trying to learn how to make yeast? Oh my God, I married a weirdo. I know how to make yeast, man. I know how to make yeast. I'll never make yeast. Ten bucks says I'll never make it. All right, so add all of them except for the first one. So this time I don't write the zero, but I write everybody else. If I add that all up and put it in the calculator, I got something like 40.5. And remember, this is a under approximation. This is an over approximation. So it's somewhere in between these two. So now let's talk about the MRAM. The MRAM, we need a whole new table. Remember, this is my X, this is my Y. Okay? So M stands for the midpoint the midpoint of each of these, which means if you can't see what's halfway between zero and 0 0.5, which is just 0 0.25, then you have to put it in the calculator and crunch it out. Okay, but it ends up being one quarter, and then this is three quarters. So, I'm sorry, zero, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, five fourths, six fourths, and then seven fourths. 8 fourths, 9 fourths, 10 fourths, 11 fourths, 12 fourths, 13 fourths, 14 fourths, and then 15 fourths. And this would be 16 fourths. And again, you could just, if you guys, most of you write decimals when you hand me your work. So it's zero, what's halfway between zero and 50 cents, 25 cents. Halfway between 50 cents and a dollar, 75 cents. Halfway between a dollar and a dollar fifty, a dollar twenty-five. Just write your decimals; it's fine. If you don't have a graphing calculator, you take each one of these, throw it into here, get your y value. I'm gonna cheat because I can, and whatever I do, what I want. Point two five, and here we go. I have negative point eight one two five. Oh, darn it. I did not want to do that. I'm going to start with 0.25 and go by 0.5. I didn't do it right. All right. Negative 1.313. Negative 0.3125. I'm sorry. 2.1875. 6.1875. 11.688, and 27.188. Now, again, I need to visualize how far apart the base of each rectangle is, which is still a half. 75 cents minus 25 cents is 50 cents, and I add all these up. 
20 vrouwen om And put that all on the calculator. And your hemorrhage should come out to 31.705. 7505, right? Okay, so here it is. I will try to do another one of these or at least sign another one so I go over it for homework. All right, hopefully that helped you guys out. All right, let's take a look at something else now. Ready? Moving on. All right, I'm gonna give you Page 275, number 19. You guys should have that from the last video lesson. So if you take a look at page 275, which I'm trying to conserve as much paper as possible here because you can't even get paper in there. It's ridiculous. All right, number 19. Ah, yes. They're going to give me this picture. So take a look at this picture on number 19. And remember, they're saying find the total shaded area. Area under the curve, there's two words I want you to think of. An integral or a, that's right, antiderivative. So let's go forwards for a second. When you hear integral, what do I want you to think of? Area under the curve. When you hear antiderivative, what do I want you to think of? Area under the curve. So here they're saying it backwards. What's the total area? They want you to take an antiderivative of this whole thing from zero to four. The problem is, when you look at the picture of it from zero to four, and you look at the shaded area from the curve to the x-axis, some of it is above and some of it is below. And I told you in the last lesson, you do the stuff above minus the stuff below. So I'm actually gonna split this up. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do the antiderivative of this guy from zero to three minus the antiderivative of this guy from three to four. One more time. The reason why I'm doing that is some of it is above in positive land and some of it is below in negative land. So you do top minus bottom, above minus below. And you gotta split it up by the integrand, by the limits that you're integrating by, from zero to three minus from three to four. Okay, so let's look at number 19. I'm just gonna put this over here. Sorry guys. So it's 3x minus x squared. This is page 275 in the textbook handout that I put up for video lesson eight. So we have, I'm gonna do the antiderivative from zero to three. This is the stuff above the x-axis of 3x minus x squared, remember to write your dx afterwards, minus, and then I'm gonna finish it off with the stuff below the x-axis from three to four, 3x minus x squared dx. Okay, all right, so while I do this, now I have to integrate. And this is doing it by hand. Now, I did a lot of these. I did a few of these or whatever. I did examples of these by hand. So the rule is add one, put it over that number. Add one, put it over that number. Remember derivative. Multiply, take one away. Multiply, take one away. So an and derivative is add one, put it over that number. Anything that is a constant, a number by itself, you just stick an X with it. Okay? Try to show you some of that stuff on video lesson eight, which hopefully you watched already. And then we talked about some of the trig stuff and I also talked to you about what happens when you have numbers to integrate by versus when you don't. In this case, we have limits to integrate by. So again, take the antiderivative and then plug in the top number minus plugging in the bottom number. Take the antiderivative, plug in the top guy 
minus plugging in the bottom guy. And then you're going to subtract these two answers because it's the stuff above minus the stuff below. Okay. If there weren't numbers to integrate by, you would just take the antiderivative, add one, put it over that number, add one, put it over that number, and then write what at the end? Plus, that's right, plus C. Okay. So let's do it. We're going to do this guy first. Add one. So it's, right now it's 3x to the first. So it becomes 3x what? 1 plus 1 is 2. Put it over that number. Minus, add 1 to the 2, you get 3. Put it over that number. And now I want to integrate from 0 to 3. Minus, now I'm going to do this guy. Add 1, it's the same integration. Put it over that number. Minus, add 1, put it over that number. And on this side, I'm plugging in from 3 to 4. So, you do the stuff above the x-axis minus the stuff below the x-axis. And then when I plug in here, you have to remember the top number minus the bottom number. Okay, so over on this side, plug in three first. Minus, now if I plug in zero, this is all going to go to what? Zero. Okay, minus, here I'm going to plug in the four first. Now I'm going to plug in the three. Okay, so let's roll. Three squared is nine. Nine times three is 27. So this is 27 halves minus 27 divided by three is nine. And then it's just minus zero. So I have this on this side. Minus. 4 squared 16, 16 times 3 is 48, right? Word. So this is 48 halves, which is 24, minus 4 cubed is 64, 64 thirds, minus, and then this should be the same as this. 9 times 3 is 27 halves, minus 27 thirds is just 9. Oh my lord. Okay, so. Yeah, I can make them all into fractions and be dorky, but that's just going to confuse you. So I'm going to do it all in the calculator. 27 halves minus 9 minus. We're going to do 48 halves minus 64, whoops, 64 thirds, minus 27 halves, minus 9. Nineteen thirds. Does that sound about right? Yep. So this is, and it's exact. So no more approximately equal sign. Nineteen thirds, which is the same thing as sixteen point three repeating. Now let's try another one like that. Let's try. Let's try it a little different. Let's kick it up a notch. Twenty-two. From page two seventy-five. So 22 says y equals negative x squared plus 5x minus 4 from 0 to 2. They want you to graph it, integrate over the interval, and find the area of the region between the graph and the x-axis. So basically it's the same thing as 19, except for the game changer is they're not giving you the picture. So you have to take the extra step and graph the picture so that I know who's above and who's below and how to split it up. 
you know, above minus below. Now on the homework tonight for this assignment, I'm, I want you to do 20, which they give you the picture and then 21 and 23, which they don't. So I'm going to give you the pictures for 21 and 23 and help you set it up. I'll help you set up 21 and give you the picture for 21. And then for 23, I'm gonna give you the picture and see if you can set that one up on your own and actually do it on your own. And then we'll go over it in the next video. Okay, so let's do 22 together so you have a feeling and you're comfortable enough doing the homework. And then I'm gonna go over the homework problems that were due today on Wednesday. Okay, so 22 is negative x squared plus five x minus four. All right, so. Let's see. I'm going to give you the graph. Negative x squared plus 5x minus 4. Minus 4. And I had to fix my table set back to 0 and delta 1. Delta, the delta table is changing in 1s. And they want me to go from, excuse me, 0 to 2. Okay. So, zoom 6. So I'm just going to here. So you see, here's the stuff below and here's the stuff above. So I'm going to do this guy above minus this guy below. So I'm going to sketch this picture for you. And basically, it's going to come up at one. And then it looks like it does something like this. And they want this area of the shaded region from the graph to the x-axis. And this is for negative x squared plus 5x minus 4 from 0 to 2. Okay? So above minus below. So it's above from 1 to 2 of this function. Don't forget to write your dx at the end minus the stuff below from zero to one. And remember, another big rule is the bigger number always goes on top with the limits. Okay, so again, this shaded area above the x-axis from one to two of the function minus the antiderivative of the stuff below from zero to one of the shaded region of the same function, okay? So here we go, let's integrate this side first. Add one, what's two plus one? That's right, it's three, put it over the same number. Plus, add one, what's one plus one? Two, put it over that number. Minus four, now it's a constant, so what do I stick with it? An x, I'm gonna go from one to two. Minus, now this is going to integrate the same way. Add one, put it over that number. Add one, put it over that number. A constant, you stick an X with it. And that one goes from zero to one. Okay, let's roll. Then it's top, plug in the top, every ACX, minus plugging in the bottom, every ACX. So negative two cubed is negative eight, thirds. And then 4 times 5 is 20 halves. 20 halves is just 10. And then negative 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 8. Minus plug in the bottom. So negative 1 third plus 5 halves minus 4. So that's just this side. Plug in the 2 minus plugging in the 1. Minus, now I'm going to do this side. One is negative one third plus five halves minus four. That's plugging in the top number, the one. Minus, what happens if I plug in zero every ACX? Zero cubed zero, zero divided by anything zero, zero squared zero, 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 zero. So it all goes to zero. Okay. All right, let's put this mofo in the calculator. And you guys can do this on a cell phone calculator. You can do it on a computer calculator. 
I'm going to give you enough so that you can do it. So negative 8 thirds plus 10 minus 8 minus... Ah. Negative one thirds plus five halves minus four, and then minus the bottom guys. Negative one thirds plus five halves. Jimmy, do you have pizza on the mind? That all goes to three, believe it or not. All right, guys. Let's talk about how we're gonna set up the homework for you. <clears throat> so again, your homework for this lesson for video lesson nine is going to be in the text, page 275. I want you to do 20, 21, and 23. Now, you need the picture, and some of you may not have a graphing calculator. 20, they give you the picture. So let's talk about the setup. The stuff above minus the stuff below above minus below. So the stuff above goes from what to what? Two to three minus the stuff below goes from zero to two. So when you set up 20, you're gonna go from the stuff above, two to three of the function, okay? Minus the stuff below is from zero to two. Okay, integrate and plug in, top minus bottom. Integrate and plug in, top minus bottom, and then subtract the answers. All right, 21, they don't give you the picture. And I want you to go from, sorry, zero to three. So, a lot of you may not have a graphing calculator, so I'll help you out. X squared minus six X plus eight, zoom six, and we're going from zero to three. So it looks like the stuff above minus the stuff below. So let me sketch it for you. So you have it and you can, you can sketch it into your notes so you can do your homework assignment. So it looks like it's doing something like that. Sorry, it goes through with the two. And then like that. You want the area of the shaded region. This is three. That's one and that's zero. So remember, stuff above minus the stuff below. So who's, where does it go from when it's above? What's the limits from zero to what? Two of this. Don't forget your dx minus the stuff below is from two to three of the same function. Okay, guys, integrate, plug in, top minus bottom. Integrate, plug in, top minus bottom. Okay, let's look at the next one, 23. They give you two x minus x squared from zero to three. No picture, so let me graph it for you. Right, two x minus x squared. Zoom six, and we're gonna go from zero to three. Again, above minus below. So,
There it is. Above minus below. So it goes above from zero to what? Two of this function minus, it goes below from two to three of this function. And look at me, I set it up for you and I said I wasn't going to in the last one. And then you plug in. So there's no reason in the world why you can't start this. Remember when you integrate, add one, put over that number, add one, put over that number. And then you plug in, top guy minus bottom guy. All right, my dear darlings, last thing I'm gonna end you with is the homework answers. Your homework was from page 274 and 275. You had to do 135 and 40. So I'm gonna do one of them. Does that sound good? Uh, I guess I'll do three. Yeah, three had the different letters, right? And I feel like you would all be confused by that. I'll walk you through the answers on the other ones. Let's look at number one. From one to two of F was negative four. From one to five of F is six. And from one to five of G, a totally different function is eight. So part A, they said, go from two to two. Now remember, when you see an antiderivative or an integral, what do I want you to think of? Area under the curve. So what could the area under the curve be if I'm not moving? What's the total distance traveled if I stand in one spot and don't move? It's technically zero, but we still have to say not enough information given. But if you go from two to two, really, I would accept zero as an answer. Because if you're not moving, there's no area under the curve. Five to one of G. So check it, yo. Where's G? There's G money. But be careful, what's the golden rule? I don't like the bigger number on the bottom. Where should the bigger number always be? Up top, go big or go home. So flip it, pull out a negative. So really it's a negative eight, okay? One to two of three times F. You pull the constant out, the three. One to two of F is negative four. And then what's three times negative four? Negative 12. How are we doing so far, darlings? Part D, we're gonna go two to five of F. So now, one to two of F, one to two of F is negative four. And then two to five, one to five is six. So I just do six minus a negative four. So you ready? Six minus a negative four. This whole guy, and take this little guy away just to get, to get what I want, two to four, is 10. Six minus a negative is a positive, so six plus four is 10. All right, last but not least, E. One to five of F is here, that's six, minus one to five of G, that's eight. So what's six minus eight? Negative two. Oh, there is one more, F. One to five of four times F minus G. So one to five of F is six. Six times four is 24. Minus one to five of G is eight. So what's 24 minus eight? 16. And hopefully that helps you with number one. Now, number two, if you change the variable, then the D whatever has to agree. So here it's F of X, which means it has to be DX. I think this is so funny, F U, huh? F U. If it's f of u, then it has to be du. If it's f of z, it has to be dz. If it's f of t, it has to be dt. If it's f of s, it has to be ds. Okay, it has to agree, grammatically speaking. They tell you one to two is f, five. So one to two of f u, still five. Doesn't matter if we change the variable, it's the same function, it's still f. The f is the important part that has to stay the same. Now, if they said one to two of g of u, then you're like, oh, I don't know anything about a g. Okay, one or two of rad three times F, it's just rad three times five is five rad threes. Uh-oh, what do they do here? Do we like this? Bells and whistles should go off, what do you do? Flip it, put the bigger number up top, and pull out a what? 
a negative, so it's just negative 5. 1 and 2 of you negate f is, again, negative 5. All right, so 5a, you should get 4, and 5b, you should get negative 4. Here's my work for it if you want to pause and take a look. All right, 40 was a little wiggity wiggity whack. We're going to end with this one. So, 40 said a driver averaged 30 miles per hour on a 150 mile trip and then turned over the same 150 miles at the rate and then returned over the same 150 miles at the rate of 50 miles per hour. He figured that his average speed was 40 miles per hour for the entire trip. So, what do you do to get the 40? He added 30 and 15 divided by 2. He just averaged the 2. You can't do that, though. You can't take an average of the average. All right, so what was his total distance traveled? I told you the biggest real-life example of this is total distance traveled. Well, if you went 150 miles going and 150 miles coming back, his total distance was 300 miles. That's easy like Sunday morning. Okay? Part B, what was his total time spent for the trip? Okay. Well, he did 150 miles in 30 miles per hour. So 150 divided by 30 is five hours. It took him five hours to do that trip. Then he did 150 miles in 50 miles per hour, and that divides out to three hours. So total time is five plus three, which is eight hours. Okay, not a lot of antiderivatives here. C, what was his average speed for the trip? It's not... You don't add the 30 and the 15 divided by 2. You take the 300 miles and divide by the 8 hours, which gives you 37.5 hours. Total distance traveled divided by the average miles, the average time it took, which is 8 hours. His error was he averaged his two speeds. Part D said, explain the error in the driver's reasoning. He averaged his two speeds. Can't do that when you're driving two different speeds. Okay, I hope that helped with the homework. If not, text me, let me know. I can do another one. All right. Um, and again, the homework for this video lesson is video lesson nine. I'm going to leave this up here in case you want to pause it, take a picture of it. All right, my dear darlings, have a good one. See you next time. Take care. Brush your hair.